Hello. Mobility is something we all take for granted in our everyday life. When you move bigger stuff or a lot of stuff, it's called logistics. And when you move people, it's called mobility. Anyway, something is moving around and that's how our modern society works. As General Omar, Omar Bradley once famously said, amateurs talk strategy and professionals talk logistics. We often associate mobility with technology uh, like passenger cars, trains, airplanes, maybe the services and the infrastructure that comes within. Development and research make these technologies uh, safer, faster, cheaper and more convenient. That has been the ruling trend for the past century or two. But during the last few decades, large technological advancements have gone towards making the various machines of mobility more sustainable, greener, if you will. The trend to push these more environmentally sustainable this, uh, this technology is undeni undeniably pushed forward by an increased understanding of one of the most serious threats to the human civilization and its anthropogenic climate change. We humans have a tendency of springing into action only when we realize that something monumental, some big task is absolutely needed to be performed. Leaded fuel is poisoning our chil children, well, we get rid of leaded fuel. The CFCs are poking holes in the ozone layer. Well, let's get rid of CFCs. All bets are off when we, humans, decide that something needs to be achieved together, no matter the cost. Take a look at the International Space Station or, or the Apollo program. Stopping the climate change, however, seems completely uh, and totally, it seems impossible though. And now, in the beginning of new decade, we have more acute crisis on our hands that needs solving. 2021 has started off pretty much where 2020 ended. The pandemic is still ravaging our lands and uh, it show, it's showing no declining and the future looks uncertain. And uncertainty is the, the most devastating state of mind that can grip our societies as it makes preparing something of a guessing game. Large infrastructural changes or sweeping changes in regulation and legislation need clear parameters and some idea of how the future will actually work. But uncertainty puts us in the back seat and we can only react to what is happening to us. This affects mobility as well and in this very absurd situation where another human being may be the carrier of a uh, deadly virus and spending too much time in close with each other puts you at the risk of exposure. We need to rethink our daily lives and this rethinking has revealed some fairly big consequences for our societies. The inability to move freely or, ho or hold gatherings has had less impact on, on our daily lives in 2020, especially in developed countries, than it would have had, let's say, a decade ago or in underdeveloped countries. Since the broadband internet and teleconferencing, it makes some of our working life and social life and studying possible, and yet our economies are crumbling and shaking on their fun foundations. We live in a globalized, a networked world. The things we use in our everyday life are no longer produced by local carpenters or blacksmiths, um, but the raw materials and the components and the finished products that we use, they come, on, come to us from all over the world. The food we eat, it might be local or it might be from more exotic sources, but the need for working logistics chain is nevertheless as important now as it has ever been. It may be possible for you to order your food over the internet and have it delivered on your doorstep. But since we don't live in the world of Star Trek yet, the products did not materialize on your front porch from the thin air. To be honest, logistics have fared fairly well, fairly well during this crisis and that is no surprise. You order a lot of stuff over the internet and you don't need a lot of group, large group of people to drive a lorry or a forklift. And the supply chains could be managed with surprisingly small amount of human interaction and surprisingly small amount of people. It's places where people need to congregate in order to make them work that has been hit the most. Bars, hotels, cultural events, and of course, public transport. The main idea behind public transport is to reduce the amount of resources used per passenger. That's clear. 
Even though planes and trains and buses are, well, bigger than smaller planes or uh, passenger cars, they're capable of transporting a lot of people quickly and more or less efficiently. In fact, trains are one of the most efficient means of transport that we've ever invented. During the pandemic, we've had robot pil bus pilots with only one passenger allowed, um, allowed on board to minimize the risk of exposure. Um, the Helsinki city region transportation systems have had so few passengers that the companies are struggling. And there's most likely it's not an airline in the world which is not in deep problems right now. Automation, robotization and on-demand rides and delivery systems and intelligence transport services, all of these are hot topics in transport uh, research and development scene for now and, and have been for a good while. These goals to make these transportation technologies safer and more efficient and more convenient is the goal. But these are just technologies regarding the platforms of travel. And these technological advancements would probably be made over time in any case. But the pandemic is a completely different, it's a wicked problem of, of sorts. If the foundation, if the premise of public transportation itself is challenged via the fact that human interactions can be dangerous, Solving the challenge via the means of technology becomes much, much harder. And as I mentioned, uncertainty is the key here. Should we even start to make pandemic-resistant physical solutions to our transport systems? And should we start moving, uh, refitting our vehicles? Will these be cost-effective? Are these viable? Are they even necessary? And what does the next threat look like? Only time will tell how we will come out of the COVID pandemic and most likely the combination of large-scale vaccination happening right now in these premises or the, maybe the mutations of the virus to less severe ver versions of itself will be the answer. But one question we need to ask ourselves then is when the pandemic is really ever over, if ever. There are a lot of contagious diseases that plague us every year and some researchers have said that the next pandemic is only around the corner. Will the years to come, will, be, will they be the new normal or, or do we just revert back to our old ways? As usual, the answer lies somewhere in between. After this pandemic declines to manageable levels, we will resume our old ways of dining in restaurants and going on vacation, that's for sure. But most likely we will also pick up some changes from this exceptional time. Whether it is the abundance of teleconferencing or hand sanitizers on every corner or maybe even restrictions of gatherings of people. I don't know, time will tell. Uh, during this pandemic, it has not been evident that any major physical changes, such as individualized bubble for passengers or compartments, would have been planned to implement it in the transportation hardware. But the crisis of mobility has definitely affected the way we see and view our needs of mobility. I've always said that no mobility is also mobility. And by this no mobility is also mobility, I'm referring to the fact that moving around always consumes energy, it consumes resources. This pandemic showed us perfectly that even though we humans actually thrive in the company of others as social animals, maybe we can substitute some of our physical moving around via these new means of technology. And uh, one could argue that Zoom and Teams are other teleconferencing software, maybe that's just transportation technology after all. In the beginning of 2020, many argued that work-related trips were okay and uh, traveling for your vacation was not acceptable and something to be ashamed of. But I find this weird. We have seen that much of our work-related traveling could be substituted with teleconferencing, but sightseeing via, via your computer, while it is possible, it has much smaller impact on one's well-being. Will there be a solution that solves all our mobility problems created by the pandemic? Absolutely not. But we can learn a lot from the time that we were forced to rethink how, where, why, and with what methods we move and use those experiences to make our mobility more purposeful, safer, more resilient and more efficient. Thank you.